I did want to ask him about his friend, John Wallace. Oh, John Delbert Wallace. <laughs> well, you know how to get an interview started. So he had just gotten a tattoo. Right, right. That's what we want to hear about. So go ahead and tell us the whole stuff, Jack. And uh, yeah, why don't you talk to us for a little while, and uh, and then we'll run off to lunch here. But yeah, tell us uh, just a little bit, if I don't hurt it. Um, so I want to hear about John Wallace. Every just remember him, and then the kind of sad story I'd like to hear is uh, when uh, the story about the shorts that you are going to be relieved, and the whole story. And it's just so sad that we and. All of you guys have a story about someone you remember that was lost there that day. And so we kind of want to remember those people and never forget what happened that day. And, um, and then after you tell us a little bit about that or whatever you want to talk about today, I want you to talk about this lady here, Laura. Oh, and we'll just take a time. minute <laughs> and remember, you're terrific, Laura. <laughs> Thanks. Okay. So go ahead, Jack. We just want to, I want to come by and just talk to you again. I, I've been meaning to come by for a while, and I'm glad. You're looking good. You're looking great, Jack. You actually are. But yeah, tell us about John, your friend John Wallace. Uh, John Delbert Wallace was from King City, California. You know where that is? The valley. It's down yeah, near the border. Yes. And uh, when he got in the Navy, he joined, and his sister, he had an older sister, says, now when you get in the Navy and you go ashore, don't get a tattoo, because I don't want to come home someday and see you with your arms with writing on it I can't read. So he says, to get a tattoo, he says, the night before, December 6th, we both raided Liberty. He says, will you go with me? I gotta go and get this tattoo. And it was where his t-shirt would cover the mark. So he got it done, and while he was there, I went across the street and there was a new Woolworth store. And uh, I told him that I saw that there, and he says, oh, get some Hawaiian Christmas card, card from them, if they have it. So I picked up a couple, but they never got sent. <laughs> wow. Anyway, he, he got the tattoo under his arm, and the next morning, he says, you want to see my new tattoo? I says, yeah. So we went up way high on the ship, the highest point, and he pulled off his shirt and everything and showed me the, the tattoo. And he says, I don't want my sister to see this. Right, right, right. Yeah. So you were way up at the top of the ship then, like in one of those towers, or? Well, no, it's up uh, where some of the boats were. Okay, okay. Yes. And then what happened? Well, then we came down below and the attack all started. Oh, wow, wow. I says, I got to relieve the watch. And we used to relieve the watch 15 minutes ahead of time. Right, right. Every Yeah, everything's organized 15 minutes, and it's very strict, too. I noticed you guys had whole time sheets of the whole day, right? What yeah. What you would be doing, right? So you show up 15 minutes early, right? Yeah. And uh, on the way down here, uh, one of the chiefs says, you're out of the uniform. I says, what? I had white pants on, and he says, you got to wear shorts. 
I says, I don't have any shorts. Right. He says, well, I'll let you borrow a pair, and you take one of yours, go down to your locker, get one, and bring it up, and bring it down to the laundry, because the people in there, they wouldn't know what to do. Sure, yeah. So they're still there. Right. So up till that point, it was just another Sunday morning, and the, it was the, a Sunday the, morning. The executive yeah. officers kind of giving you a hard time, and then yeah, well, I mean, you know, that was part of it. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, so when he asked you to get your shorts, was, was he like, you know, I don't mean to get too many details, but was he like angry at you, or was it just no? Was he, it, was it was just just, just change. He your wanted clothes. me to, to yeah. be like everybody else. Yeah, just no big deal. That's just an innocent, yeah, innocent order. Yeah, another situation. Yeah. And, um, well, I know uh, the story that you you have never worn shorts since then. No, and and, I uh, don't. Why, uh, I don't know if you want to talk about the attack, but just tell us why you don't wear shorts. Because <laughs> you lost the guy, the guy who you were going to relieve, we lost him, right? Yeah. Yeah, his, his body's still down there. Because they told him when you get relieved, you go to the, there's a little opening on the other side of where you go out. And he says you go up the ladder and then you'll be out on the deck where you can go where you want. Right. Well, he got in this little place and started to go up where you go out and the battle grating was down. Wow. And it takes two people to raise it. Wow. And so yeah, he, was he, he, he couldn't get it up. Yeah. And he came down where we were, and uh, we, I was going to, and he was part of it, checking to see the, what we would need in case of emergency. Yes, sir. Uh, a, a voltage tester, rubber gloves, that kind of stuff. Right. Oh, wow, he was down there with you. He was with me. The then he says he's going to go back again. And he says maybe somebody will come down and lift the battle grate in the meantime because they were on the other side painting. Right. Wow, wow, wow. There was a lot of unusual things with the ship that day. The board, the timbers on the Every, top, everything, everything was, was different. Unusual. Yes, sir. And when John Wallace got a, a tattoo, so his t-shirt sleeve would cover it. And he told me that, he said, do not take a shower or a bath. Right. He said, if you want to clean yourself, Get a towel, rinse it with hot water, and wipe yourself off. Right, right. So he's got that fresh tattoo on his arm. Then what happened to it? Did well, <laughs> he he made his way out. Uh-huh. Uh, Good. There was a hatch or something. That oh, my. He got open, and he went out there. And he and this other fella, I'm trying to think of his name, but his father was a policeman in this uh, place. It's in Southern California. It starts with an A, that's all I can remember. Sure, Anaheim A to you. Well, anyway, yeah. they both got together and says, we got to get off of this ship because it's going down fast. And they said, there's some boats out there, there's people in them, and maybe if we jump in the water, they'll come and get us. Well, they got all ready to jump, and they both said, we'll go together. And he jumped in the water, and John Wallace, dove down and it came up and he says, gee, where is Kelsey? 
Well, anyway, he saw a bunch of timber floating. And he says, couldn't imagine what that was. And pretty soon a body floated up. Oh my. And that was the other fella that they decided to jump at the very same time. So anyway, he didn't make it out, of course. And uh, in the meantime, I says, he had told me that his father was a policeman in, uh, I can't think of the name of the... Yeah, I was thinking Anaheim would be Alhambra? Alhambra? Uh, mm -hmm. It's somewhere down in there. Okay. So I was down that area one day. Great. And uh, I thought I'd go over and tell him what I heard and what I saw and everything. And uh, he says, that was my son that, that jumped off and then got hit with all of these timbers. Well, all these timbers were on the deck of the ship because we were acting as a target and that was protecting the ship and the people inside. And that they all got together and we were due to give them to the Navy Yard. Yeah. Because they could use them. But, of course, you know, it never happened. And, uh, of course, those timbers were just huge. Were they bigger than well, the other guys? No, they were made into lumber. Yeah. yeah. Big, big blocks. Yeah, I'm thinking much bigger than a railroad tie, right? Huh? Much bigger than a railroad tie. A uh, piece of wood, but yeah, bi a huge, bigger than that. Huge, yeah. And uh, so you guys would be inside of the ship. This is before the war. You guys would be inside the ship, and they would be bombing you with these target bombs, right? And you would be inside. You could hear them. Oh them? yeah. Okay. Wow. Wow. Okay. Amazing. Um, but your friend John Wallace made it out of the yeah. He made he it to safety. He swam. Yeah. And he got picked up and everything. And then when I was rescued, he watched him do it to, uh, for me. Yes, yes. Because as soon as I got out, he hollered, hey, remember me? Oh, wow, wow, wow. Isn't that wonderful? Yeah. What a wonderful thing. Yeah, thank, praise those guys that cut you out with that torch, or I guess they cut you out with a torch? Yeah. A torch, they cut, so they had to cut through how, what is a couple of inches of steel, was it, or trying to think how uh, big it was? I you know? say it's over an inch. Wow, down there. Uh, well, we're just so glad that you're here today, Jack, and uh, we could we could keep telling some more stories, but uh, I'm, I just want to tell you how good you look. And I know you're getting older, and uh, it's pretty hard once you get close to 100, you know, up in the high 90s. But you look great, Jack. You really do look good, and I'm just so happy that you've recovered and that Laura's here to spend a little time with you. Oh, she's a big help. Yeah. Why don't we talk about...